Guys, oh, I don't know. I don't know how to say this. Um, basically, you've been living a lie, I've been living a lie, and ultimately, we we really need to change. And it's it's something that's been going on for a really long time for me. I find this quite difficult to talk about, but hopefully, going forward, I can uh, be a better person. Of course, I'm talking about how you pronounce Forza. Basically, I have said Forza in, in every video I've ever done, but the developers have, have said actually, Ben, and most of you guys, that it's pronounced Forza. It's Italian for for... <laughs> oh, I can't do this. <clears throat> Straight face. It's, it's Italian for forced, which, you know, I feel like I'm being forced to change my behaviour, but it is what it is. I'm, I'm sorry guys that I've, I've had to, to break this to you. Um, I wish I'd given you a bit more warning. It, it is. It is. <laughs> this intro. Oh dear. Anyway guys, I hope you're doing well. My name is Ben Griffin. This is A Tribe Called Cars, as you've heard a million times. Today's video Apart from making stupid intros, I'm going to be telling you about what the Ferrari 599XX is all about. So somebody in the comments on another video said, Ben, can you do the Ferrari 599XX? So I thought, hell, why not? And so, as per my new system of testing, I'll be doing around 40 laps of the Holyrood Park Circuit in Edinburgh. And then I'll be doing Goliath as many times as I can cope with, because it's about 8 minutes a lap. So it is quite a time-intensive test. But, do the first 20, make some tweaks, and then basically see if I can fine-tune it into a much better car. So as per usual, I'm going to share my setup in the game, but you can watch the video now and input the settings yourself. And that means you can tweak and do what you like with them, make them a bit better, make them a bit worse. That really depends on your skill and your driving style. So a couple of things to note with this car. It is quite heavy, so I would say this is a low to mid tier X class because there aren't too many options in terms of tuning and actually if you go for the full horsepower the car is around 1500 kilograms so I've missed out on a couple because I'd rather have a little bit more cornering ability at the expense of top speed. You may well test otherwise and find it works better for you but I'd rather have peak grip and pretty much as much horsepower as you can get without screwing the weight over. So it's 1,463 kilograms in this setup and has peak power of 1,347 horsepower. Lateral G's come in at 2.6. So I did a little bit of experimentation with this car because you have three rear spoilers. One is no spoiler, two is the Forza tunable one, and then the third has the Ferrari badge, but it's basically no rear spoiler, so it's a little odd. And essentially you have two of the same thing. I ran some tests and I found that although you get a higher top speed with the Ferrari no wing, it's actually better to have some rear downforce. It just makes the car easier to handle and better at cornering. It certainly improves the speed you can go around the bends. So that's a good thing. Although weirdly enough, the difference wasn't huge. Um, that could be because of a number of reasons and factors, but ultimately my lap time at Holyrood wasn't hugely different without the rear wing. Um, and the same can be said of Goliath. So I'd put the arrow on and then have it at its least setting. And then if you want to dial it up, go for it. But if you put too much, then the car struggles to corner. You get understeer, which isn't the best. Now as per usual I've made some custom tweaks but ultimately I've used Hokey Hoshi's formula to take into account the balance of the car. In this particular case it's actually 50% so that makes these sums very easy because they're basically all the same because the front and the back are the same weight. Now in terms of how the car drives it actually really surprised me despite being quite heavy and not having as high lateral G's as some of the other cars I've done videos on and some I haven't. It still can go into corners with quite a lot of force. It has a pretty decent top speed, almost hitting 
sort of 270 on the longest bits of Goliath. So that's that's really quite impressive. It is, however, a little less agile. The brakes are good. It does slow down rather rapidly, even with ABS off, and if I manage to mess things up a bit. But it's not quite as nimble and as fast and as punchy as, say, the Mosler MT900S or the Porsche 911 GT3 RSPO or the Maserati MC12 FE. What I do like about it though is the way it looks and it's just really quite fun and also if you lose control in this car and you start to go into a slide you can actually save it most of the time so it's, it's quite a good drift car I imagine you could set this up and have a lot of fun with it in that respect but for sheer racing sadly as much as I tried and with quite a few tweaks I could not get it into the 54 seconds a lap on Holyrood Park circuit. I think I managed just inside 55 seconds which is still decent but then the Mosler MT900S managed 51.722 or something. So I don't think you're going to be beating the world record with this car. Likewise the Goliath lap was a 7.45 so with my driving and it's not perfect I admit that it's going to be doing about 25 to 30 second longer lap than other cars even if you do much much better then you could probably do the same in the Mosler and be around seven maybe even into the early sixes so do I like the 599XX? Well, the thing is, yes, I do. It's been really quite enjoyable. It's satisfying to drive and it's not hugely difficult to master. It's got a couple of quirks, but actually once it's up to speed, it does really start to come to life. And it was consistently fast around Holyrood. There were just a couple of times when I overdid it and a couple of corners where I had to sort of do 150, 160, as opposed to the usual 170, 80 I can do in other vehicles. It does have its limitations, but hopefully you guys can use this setup and basically enjoy the car. I did make some fairly heavy modifications to the differential settings, and actually that made a big, big difference. The car was drastically better. Anyway, what I'm hoping to do is a sort of league table of cars. So I'm going to do this test with a lot of the fastest cars in the game. Some of the cars aren't that fast. Basically all are X-Class, but I might extend this to S2 or S1. That's a later date. I think it'd be a bit of fun just to see how they compare when I'm driving. And although the laps might not be perfect, you can at least see which one I found easiest to drive because, you know, if it's fastest and I'm not the best driver in the country or the world, then that's saying something. Likewise, if a car's very, very fast, but I struggle to really get consistent lap times or you have a higher average time overall, then you know it's quite difficult to get the best from. But anyway, it's mainly a bit of fun. Hopefully you guys can ultimately try and beat these times yourself. Modify the setups, tell me what you think of them and how you've made them better. If you're here to watch videos about cars and tuning, then hell, it's good to discuss it in the comments. And on that note, without further ado, I will now show you the best lap I did at Goliath because you've seen quite a lot of the park circuit and Goliath I think is the most difficult circuit in the game, certainly to become consistent at and set good times. I really hope you've enjoyed the video, my name is Ben Griffin and I hope you have a splendid week, bye.